Climate change is our biggest problem. This podcast lays out some of the smartest fixes for climate change. My name is Matt, and this is Climate Solutions. Today, your city is a sponge. Cities. You'll know you're in one if you see an English gentleman changing out of his brown country shoes and putting on black ones. Never brown in town, don't you know? Cities are obviously where most of us live, and no matter the effects of climate change in every aspect of life on Earth, it's also where most of us are likely to be affected by climate change. That's in the form of increasingly frequent floods and super high temperatures, both of which are a big cost to the economy and, even worse, cause death. So if we agree that we don't want people in our cities to die faster than they already do, let's look at what we can do to reduce the impact of climate change on urban areas. I'm going to tell you about some of the big projects going on in this area, in particular in some cities you may know, Florence in Italy and Athens in Greece, with brief stops in the Netherlands, Spain and France. And later I'll give you a checklist of things you can do to help your city cope with climate change. Meantime, Subscribe to the entire series of climate solutions from the European Investment Bank, the EU Climate Bank. I'm Matt, and I'm here with my sound guy, Nicola. Hi there, Matt. Uh, I'm going to call you in this series The Climate Croat. Uh, That's because it's a podcast about climate and you're a Croat. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So you can call me The Climate Celt. I'm from Wales, so I'm The Climate Celt. No, I think I'm good. So just start the episode, man. Okay. Let's start with a city everyone loves. Florence. You may know it as Firenze, or the place with the big naked David statue. It also has a problem with floods. That's why Florence is creating an area that will soak up future floods like a sponge. It's something a lot of cities are doing right now. Here's how it works. On the edge of Florence, there's a river called the Emma, It's a tributary of the Arno. That's not the Arno who played a homosexual lifeguard in the classic Belgian satirical movie Camping Cosmos. I know you're a big fan of Belgian cinema, Nicola. Yeah, really big fan. The Arno we're talking about here is Florence's biggest river. The idea is that when there's too much rain, the Emma gets very full, and when it then joins the Arno, the historic center of Florence gets flooded. So now there's a park around the Emma, and the excess water gathers there, eventually soaking into the ground instead of feeding into the Arno. But when the Emma isn't in flood, this area is a park that can be enjoyed by locals. There are bike paths and playgrounds and so on. It's a clever plan, and it's something that more and more cities all over the world are going to be doing. Here's the key thing. Cities are adapting to the consequences of climate change with nature-based solutions that also make the city more attractive and pleasant for residents. Why nature-based? Well, what cities like Florence used to do is build big concrete tanks to collect excess river water until the flood danger was over. Problem is, when there's no flood, you just have a big nasty concrete tank in your city, and the water has to go somewhere eventually. With the Emma flood basin, It just goes down into the ground. But before we go on, let me tell you about some terms you may need to know. Are you ready to get into the weeds here, Nicola? Are you ready for me to give you some technical climate terms? Hit me. Welcome to Professor Matt's Climate Basics class. Settle down, everyone. Today, we're going to learn about mitigation and adaptation. These are the two ways to confront climate change. Here's what they mean. When you put up a wind farm, that's climate mitigation. Mitigation is an English word that means making something less severe or less painful. A wind farm generates electricity from the wind, which means you need that much less electricity made with coal or gas. That means less greenhouse gas, and so you have mitigated the amount of emissions causing global warming. This is very important here because most of the emissions heating up the global climate come from cities. Are you with me so far, Klaas? Yes, Professor Matt. I can see you're enjoying yourself. Yes, you you can get an A for this class, I'm sure. It's excellent participation. So what about adaptation? In English, adaptation means changing something to better meet the needs of its environment. How does this apply to cities? Like Florence, 
cities need to face up to the often disastrous effect climate change is already having on them. And of course, this is going to continue to affect them in coming decades, even under the most favorable scenarios. A project like the flood basin on the Emma River is not mitigation. It doesn't reduce the amount of greenhouse gases, right? It's adaptation because it acknowledges that climate change is causing more extreme weather and therefore more floods. Florence adapts to this flooding with a project that guards against the adverse effects of the weather. That's adaptation. So this adaptation to climate change is important in cities because of the economic and social consequences of floods or extreme heat waves on unprepared populations. None of this is easy. Every mayor knows that their city has to adapt and is developing a climate strategy. But financing adaptation and making it happen is a challenge. Stay with Climate Solutions, and I'm going to tell you more about this. I'm also going to explain what is green-blue infrastructure. So the European Investment Bank, the EU's climate bank, worked with the city of Florence to define its climate strategy. It also helped figure out how to finance those climate projects. How? First, by recruiting a consultant to work with the Florence municipality to improve its flood protection scheme. This study aimed to create new green-blue infrastructure on the Emma. What is green-blue infrastructure? Green-blue infrastructure is a city planning term that means incorporating natural landscapes into public spaces, that's the green part, and combining them with good water management, blue. On the Emma, the green-blue infrastructure was designed to reduce heat island effects. We're going to get into heat island effects a little bit later in this episode. To improve the Emma's water quality, to improve sustainable mobility with bicycle paths connecting local towns and cultural sites, to reduce water pollution, to provide alternative water resources in case of shortages, and to increase biodiversity. That's a pretty good list, I'd say. Florence's adaptation project is a good one. Like most adaptation measures, it's pretty cheap compared to a lot of the things cities need to build and maintain. But it required a lot of thinking because each city's adaptation solution is unique. Cities need to bring in an expert to suggest tailor-made solutions. That's the difficulty of adaptation. There are a lot of things that can be done, but it's hard to identify the most cost-effective and the most suitable solution in any case because the climate risks and vulnerabilities are unique for each project. How unique is each adaptation project? Some things apply everywhere, of course. If there's a risk of floods, one common adaptation practice is to put heating and air conditioning machinery on the roof instead of in the basement where it can be inundated by water. But when it comes to the design of public infrastructure, things become more complicated. In conversation with some of the experts at the European Investment Bank, I collected a few unique examples from around Europe. Here's my list of four cool climate adaptation projects. You like the cool thing there, Nicola? Very cool word playing, man. Good. Number four, Malaga, southern Spain. Growing grass or trees there is a challenge because of low rainfall and because it's hot. But the city wanted people to be able to go out even in the hot times of day. So the municipality put up large parasols in pedestrian areas. The result? People go out even in the sunshine, which is good for business, tourism and social life. Cool climate adaptation project number three. Barcelona saved a lot on climate adaptation measures for social housing projects just by placing the buildings so that the breeze would ventilate them instead of using energy to air condition them. Next up, Paris, with cool climate adaptation project number two. In Paris, the city wanted to introduce measures to improve air quality. But they figured that if people were told the measures were related to climate and emissions, lots of Parisians might not be in favor. So they pitched the measures as a matter of health instead. And that made them popular, even with people who would have been unwilling to accept them just for the sake of climate action. Okay, so my top pick is a very simple one, but I love it for that reason. Cool climate adaptation project coming in at number one, Rotterdam. 
the big Dutch port city is removing paved areas, water doesn't go through concrete. So if you have a lot of concrete in city squares and so on, the rain doesn't drain away fast enough. Rotterdam is replacing concrete with sand, soil and plants. The aim, as we said earlier, is to use the city as a sponge. And they also retain the water for other uses. An urban heat island is a city area that gets much hotter than nearby country areas. That's because the heat of the sun is retained by buildings, roads and other built surfaces. A lot of energy also gets used in the city and that contributes to higher temperatures too. Athens is a good example of a city with a lot of concrete and a lot of heat. It's also a good example of a city that has really developed a good climate change adaptation plan. Athens is made up of dense constructions that cover 80% of the city's surface. All that asphalt and concrete retains heat during the extended heat waves to which the city is increasingly exposed. These urban heat islands in the city center can be more than 10 degrees Celsius warmer than the suburbs. So asphalt and concrete are a liability when the weather's hot. If you think about what I said earlier about Rotterdam, asphalt and concrete also stop water seeping away into the ground during rainstorms. The result, frequent flash floods. Can you say that very fast, Nicola? Frequent flash floods? Easy peasy. Frequent flash floods. See? You want to try something in Croatian? Want to say, Ribari we grise rep? <laughs> By the beard of Ivan Rakitic, don't test my Croatian, brate. Back to Athens. How is the city tackling its climate change problems? Well, Athens is entering into a set of innovative climate adaptation projects financed by something called the Natural Capital Finance Facility. That's a program run by the European Investment Bank in cooperation with the European Commission. It focuses on nature conservation, biodiversity, and adaptation to climate change through nature-based solutions. Remember that term, nature-based solutions? Yeah, I do. The river in Florence. That's it. It's a common thread here. So the Athens project, with the Natural Capital Finance Facility, is expected to create at least 25% more green areas and to introduce other measures like birdhouses and trees. The city is creating green corridors. That's very important for biodiversity because a green corridor allows species and air masses to move. They're also very pleasant for the city's residents, right? You're a fan. The important thing to note here, the adaptation project is part of an integrated plan, and that's what is likely to make it more effective and easier to get financing. Athens is the first city to be financed under the Natural Capital Finance Facility. It's a pilot project which the European Investment Bank thinks could be expanded to many other cities. Okay, so this podcast is called Climate Solutions. You want your dose of solution? Here it comes. These are the four things you can do right now to contribute to climate adaptation where you live. Ready, Nicola? Yeah, I'm about to live tweet it, man. Oh, before we even edit the podcast. Never mind, here they come. Number four, be informed. Well, you've just heard this podcast, so top marks to you guys, but keep up with developments in climate adaptation. You can follow me at EIB Matt, E-I-B-M-A-T-T, on Twitter, or you can subscribe to the other episodes in this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, everywhere else. You can also read about climate adaptation if you go to our blog. Type eib.org forward slash blog, B-L-O-G. Number three, ask questions about the impact of climate change on your city. Is it a health impact because heat waves send people to the hospital? Is it an economic impact from frequent floods that destroy the stores in your basement? Number two, push local authorities, that might be your city or town government, but it could be other bodies like water authorities, push them to make adaptation key to their city plans, write letters, attend meetings. And what are you going to want them to do? Real nuts and bolts stuff now. That's why this comes in at number one. Number one thing you can do right now to contribute to climate adaptation where you live. Make sure that climate adaptation is part of your city or town's urban development master plan. Once it's part of general planning, it's much easier to get individual projects started because they can be seen to help reach the bigger goal. If your city doesn't seem interested, make sure they understand that adaptation is not an issue 
that will just make you look like you're taking climate change seriously. In fact, it has an economic impact and a social impact on the quality of life of the citizens. Okay, that's our episode. For the research, I want to thank European Investment Bank urban specialists Leonor Berriochoa and Julia Macano, and Stephen Hart, Vasco Ferreira Costa, and Martin Berg, who work on the Natural Capital Financing Facility. Subscribe to Climate Solutions and you'll learn what you should do to fight climate change in the oceans, on the road, in your home, and even on your digital devices. And right now, go and use the tips in this episode to start saving the climate and listen to our other episodes to do the job right. I'll be back with Nicola the Climate Croat. Bye bye. Next time on Climate Solutions from the European Investment Bank, the EU Climate Bank.